Today in this video I would like to show you how you can do ERC20 checkout in your React application. So let's say I ha have here some example product. I can click here pay now and MetaMask asks me to transfer 19 USDT from my account to the seller account. So this is how I would like this application to work. After successful payment of course the transaction is processed and this USDT goes to the seller account. The same code I will show you today you can use for any other ERC20 token. If you would like to check the code of this application that I will prepare for you today, you can just check the description to this video and check the code on the GitHub account. Before I will jump in into the code, I think it's worth to mention what kind of libraries I will use today. So as you can see, I'm using React and Next.js because this is my favorite stack. I decided to use Wagmi and VEM. So Wagmi is a library um, that um, allows you to um, use um, some React hooks for uh, communicating with Ethereum uh, compatible blockchains. So if whenever you'd like to connect wallet and send some transaction, read from the contract, write to the contract um, and uh, do all the kind of connections, ENS addresses, you should try Wagmi because I really like how these hooks are working within the React ecosystem. And another library is VM, something like Ethers or WebJS, but I think it's just more modern and the, the documentation is a bit better than for Ethers and it's lightweight, modular. So I highly recommend you to try these libraries. So um, before, before you start, um, Preparing this application, just check out the latest Wagmi documentation and follow the steps here. All you have to do is install some NPM packages. So for example, you can uh, install Wagmi VM and Tanstack React Query. React Query is used by Wagmi behind the hood for storing queries. Um, so you just have to install that. Okay, so first we have to come up with configuration for Wagmi. I already installed uh, NPM packages, so I'm good to go. If you um, are programming with me, just make sure that you install the VM, Wagmi, and of course you have React and Next.js if you like already set up. So I will create here a config folder and inside I will just create a new file called wagmi.ts inside this uh, file and now we have to specify here the basic configuration of wagmi. So first of all I will import HTTP and create config uh, function from wagmi core and then I will import the network that I would like to use. Today I will just prepare a testnet connection, so I will import Sepolia, which is the name of the network, that it's testnet for Ethereum. Of course you can use here any EVM compatible um, blockchain, so if you like to use Polygon or Binance Smart Chain or anything else, you can just import it. And now I will also import an injected uh, cryptocurrency wallet from the connectors. Uh, connectors are something that lets you connect to the wallets, so you can use Wallet Connect, Web3 model, and any other connectors um, like Safe. Um, but to keep it simple, I will just use the injected MetaMask mode. And then I will just uh, call the create config function and configure it. So we will use Sepolia, we'll use injected connector and we'll use transports. Transports, it's something um, that lets us communicate with the certain blockchain network. So it's called JSON RPC. And uh, if you use HTTP function from Wagmi, it just uses the default JSON RPC for Sepolia. However, there's no problem if you would like to have the um, HTTP transport configured in your own way. So if you would like to use Alchemy, QuickNote or anything other providers, then you are good to go. 
and um, then there is a last um, configuration property which is stands for server side rendering i will use true because we'll use this configuration within the next js application and if you don't have this attribute configured then uh, you might have some weird hydration errors so i just keep it that way and now i can save this file and we now it's time to create a provider so I will just create another file within the app folder. So I'll call it providers.tsx. And inside this file, I have to import the Wagmi provider query client, which is used by the Wagmi behind the scenes. And of course, our config that I just prepared in the config directory. Here I'm using this use client directive because uh, this is an XJS 14 where you have server and client components and the providers, it's a client component. And then we have the um, regular uh, provider uh, React component, which takes a children prop and wraps the whole children within the query client provider and the wagmi provider and the reason why you have to wrap your application within the children um, with the wagmi provider and query client provider is that uh, whenever you have some components wrapped with it you can use the hooks so for example if we don't wrap our application with the wagmi provider then we are not able to use um, some useful hooks for connection or interaction with the smart contracts so i want to have the whole application being wrapped with it so i can use react hooks that are relevant for talking to the blockchain but here uh, as you can see in the layout i have right now the whole application wrapped within the provider so I can use all the Wagmi React hooks in my other components. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look how to implement the pay now button. Here I have a regular page where I have a product card component. Here nothing fancy happens. It's as you can see, it's a regular um, React component that takes a product as an argument. Uh, as a prop in your case you might have some product list and fetch some products from the external api or database but here just to keep this example simple i have a regular product card component with some basic styling used tailwind and here inside this component i have another component which is called pay button and it takes a price as a prop in your case, it can be the same or you can have some card or you can pass here some product ID or the whole product object. But again, just to keep everything simple, it's just a simple pay button uh, component. And inside this component, as you can see right now, we don't have any Web3 stuff. It's just a pay button that has a handle payment asynchronous function which is called if you click on the button then we have some basic um, state management so until um, the payment is completed um, we have some different wording like pay now confirming we have a message for completed payment we have the errors um, for displaying some problems with our uh, button and then if we click, we have the handle payment function that actually would be responsible for talking to our cryptocurrency wallet. So first of all, I will use import from Wagmi just to take some stuff that we will need. The first hook that I will try is use connect then use account and then use write contract so use connect is a hook that gives us some function that allow us to connect the cryptocurrency wallet then we have a use account uh, hook that allows us to fetch current uh, wallet address so we know which address our customer is using and then finally we have a hook that will let us write to the contract because we want to force our customer to pay using ERC20 token, which is a USDT in this example. And of course, whenever you move ERC20 from one place to another, you have to call the function, which is a transfer, which is actually 
calling the contract underneath. So that's why we would need this hook. And uh, then I will also import injected WAGMI connector because we would like to force the connection to the cryptocurrency wallet whenever somebody clicks handle the payment. And then the final import is Sepolia because I want to be sure that whenever we will touching the contract that we are actually connecting to the contract from specific chain ID because obviously you can connect to your application using different network and then your customer may try to interact with the wrong smart contract because of the network configuration. Um, and then I'm just using the use connect hook so we will have the connect async function which uh, i will show you how to use in the second um, then i am also to take the address which will be uh, not undefined if somebody is already connected to our application so if you would like to check if somebody is connected you can just check the address variable and then we have the function which is called write contract async and then inside the handle payment the first thing we can do is if the address is undefined then we are forcing our customer to actually connect to the application by awaiting connect async here i'm specifying the chain id to which we would like to connect so this this is a very nice solution because otherwise um, it's not forcing the customer to switch the network, but this connect actually will navigate the user through that. And then we are choosing the connector, which would be the injected MetaMask. Here you can use some other uh, connectors if you like. And here we are just making sure that we have the connection. And then finally, once we have the connection, we can start writing to the contract. So first of all, we have the chain ID um, specified, which is Sepolia. We have address. This is the address of the ERC20 contract that you would like to use. In that case, I'm using a fake USDT, which is deployed on Sepolia by protocol Ave. However, here you can choose any other ERC20 as you like and then we have the name of the function which in that case is transfer because I want to call um, transfer from buyer to the seller so I'm not using any kind of approvals I'm just wanting them to use the transfer function and then uh, we have to specify ABI here you can import the ABI from the blockchain explorers um, and you don't have to specify here the whole ABI of the contract. You can just submit information about the function that we are using here. So I'm just, I just copied the whole ABI JSON uh, from the Blockchain Explorer and I just chose uh, this one uh, object that contains information about the transfer. However, if you'd like to have the whole ABI, there is no problem, but then I would like um, to advise you just to import it from the external file. And then we have the arguments. So the transfer function takes two to our arguments. The first one is uh, the recipient address and the second one is amount. So how much we would like to send. Uh, so for example, the recipient address, it's uh, the seller. So if you are running some website where you are selling stuff, then you would like to provide your address here. You can take it also from environment variable or you can just submit it here. Um, the, the main thing with uh, analyzing all the transactions that will happen um, is of course you have to validate them on the back end and I will probably shoot some separate video on that. And then we have the second argument which is the price and in that uh, particular case we have to multiply, uh, multiply the price uh, by one and six zeros because that's how much decimals the USDT ERC20 has. So if I would provide here just 19, which is the $90, of course, it would be super small value. value so I have to um, multiply it by one uh, and six zeros just to be sure that it would be actually the $19. So um, here is about the arcs. Uh, and here we can console log the data. Okay, so now let's test how this works. I will click the pay now. Uh, MetaMask is asking me first to connect with the page because I haven't done this already. 
and then it also asked me to switch to the Sepolia testnet because actually before I had the Ethereum mainnet configured, I'm clicking connecting and then it asks me to switch to the network from Ethereum mainnet to Sepolia and now it asks me also about um, sending the 19 USDT and click confirm and now we have thank you for your payment inside the console log I also show the transaction hash so in real application of course you can save this transaction hash and pass it to the backend so backend can validate the transaction and then try to deliver the product to the buyer and now we can just paste the transaction here and now as you can see the transaction is success it's confirmed and here we have a transfer of the usdt which is erc20 token from my account to the seller account that is specified here in our arguments so that's all for today um, if you like the video subscribe to this channel and let me know in the comments what would you like to see in the future here and also check the code of the whole application on the github and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments so see you in the next one